and we are still at home for COVID, what I'm going to be doing this lab, I do not have a balance to measure this salt, but you can see the salt there. And those are my little specimen jar. I have measured the water already, but again, I will measure the water using this measuring cylinder. And I'm going to be using the computer for the stopwatch. So we have a Irish potato, the metal core that we'll use to get the sample of a potato, or a white tile. So let's get started. Get the volume of water. This water was already measured. Uh, we're using 86 ml of water. And so it was perfect. Uh, it is said that we're supposed to use a white background, but for me, it works better using the screen background. So uh, you really don't want to do that. You want to go exactly for the reading. So yes, we still have 86, and we're going to be adding it to the sample of salt. So this solution is going to be concentrated. So you can see the salt here as the solute, and of course the water as the solvent. I don't have all the apparatus to do the experiments on using what I have. So here we go. And then we're going to measure another sample of water using the same measuring cylinder. And we're using 86 ml of water for both samples. And again, I go down and uh, remember we're looking for the meniscus. That's a curved surface just below the water, the top of the water. I like to call it the thickness of the water, just below the thickness at the top there. If you were using like oil, you would have seen that very, very easily, but we're using water. So we want to ensure that the salt, the sodium chloride, is dissolved in the water before we get started. Now what we're going to do, we're just going to be using a piece of the potato. We're going to be measuring the length and we're going to be looking at the texture and of course, I uh, would say how oh, easily the potato will bend. Now this is going on very nicely because the salt is dissolving in the water. Remember we spoke sometime about solute and solvent. Alright, so there we go. Uh, the stirring would have increased the rate at which it would have dissolved. So that's out there. So we are finished with the measuring cylinder for now. And we could put away these two sample container and get right into the lab. Uh, we won't need the background anymore. But this time we're gonna need a ruler. And remember that we're measuring using centimeter. Now to use the core, all that we do is two pieces. Or this window. Shut the core in. Pull the core out. And then we're going to be using this and just shove it inside. Like how it didn't come out. Alright, so we have to be careful. Uh, Alright, frame more pieces. So there it's coming out. It's like a worm. It's pretty flexible now. You can see pretty flexible. And we're going to get another piece of that. All right, and there it's inside. Let us see if we get it out. All right, good. So probably we could just pull it out like this, or we could just use this and shove it out just the same. Now what we want to do, I have no predetermined length, so the workable length here, I will just use that. So we're gonna cut off the inch to ensure that it's somewhat even here. And then we're just gonna line up and we're going to be using, or oh, one might want to know which of the sample is the salt solution. So I'm going to be labeling one salt. Always remember to do that. Always remember to label, 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 label all the time. If you don't label, you could find yourself in serious problem. You might have to do over the entire lab. So remember to label. So that one is labeled salt. And of course, I'm going to be leaving the other one just H2O. 
light up each door. Right. So we have inches and we have centimeter. We're going to be using the centimeter. And remember, we have at the end of the scale, we have to pay attention there. We're going to start from where the scale begins. That is the mark on the scale, not the actual length of a ruler. So we're starting right here at this black mark. And we're going to be using four centimeter and there we go all right so that is out all right my son wants to be a part of the thing all right good so i want to look here uh look at this here pretty flexible and it's somewhat rough it's, it's, it's really rough it's not smooth and it's flexible uh same thing here rough uh it's really moist so we'll probably want to just dry it off a bit Dry them off a bit. And we should dry it off a little bit there. And then we're going to immerse them at the same time in both solutions. So there we go. And we are going to start the time. Alright, so there we go. It's the same timing, so uh, the little time that is lost is not too significant here for this particular experiment. We want to try as much as possible to ensure when you're working in your groups at school, to ensure that you are starting on time. Now we're going to be timing this and then we're going to tell you and show you what the result will be. We're going to be giving it a time. Remember, we are using the length of a potato. We use four centimeters. Uh, the volume of the water was 86 ml and now so all of this is start information so we are going to be waiting on the time I to see what the end result will be like uh, for both uh, strip of potato thank you Ashley, for coming <laughs> alright we have been doing this experiment for 25 minutes we're going to look at what happens so we're going to be removing this one from the water distilled water and we're going to be looking at the texture uh, you remember it was pretty it's really rough now really rough and you remember we we're able to bend it it's not easily bent right now all right so that one is out and now we're going to also measure the length and we're going to look at the one in the salt solution. Uh, let us see what's happening. All right, it's, it's smooth, not as rough as the other. And this one is easily bent. All right, so the salt solution, see, easily bent. All right, so now we want to measure the length to see if there is any changes. And remember, so we started out with four centimeters. And we are those four point one there about, right? For the this one bit. Mm -hmm. Still seems to be for us little movement. We are not able to detect that movement with the instrument we're using. Uh, the person doing physics would understand why however for the one that was in the water we're seeing movement of 2 mm all right so we are having 4.2 for the one in the water so 4.2 and the other soft seems to have lost some water uh, it's full, just a little bean a bit below four. So we'd have to go for four. So you could say that there's no real change there, though it would have lost some amount of water. All right. So we are without a balance to get the mass. So we just have to move on with what we have. Remember, probably I could just bend it and let you see what would happen. So this is the one from the salt solution, and that's what we got here. And let us look at the one from the fresh water and see what would happen. 
So see so what happens? Force it to bend and it breaks. For this one, we can characterize our own. All right. So we could say that the cells here for the salt solution, they are pretty flaccid, while the cells here, they are really turgid. So for the piece in the distilled water, the cells are really turgid. You would have seen there, trying to bend it, it broke, while the one in the salt solution were able to bend it without any hassle, and it just kept the shape. shape. All right, so you are gonna to need to record this information in a table. Uh, you want to record the information as the start length, the water volume uh, remember you are not going to be repeating the units so for length you're going to be having a centimeter for water you're going to be having ml and you need the n length and the of course n volume so we're going to find the volume of the water again to see if there's any difference in the water volume of course you need to record whether or not they were so whether they were rough or smooth and you saw that we did that, and we said that the one in the salt water was pretty smooth, suggesting that it would have lost some water. While the one in the distilled water, it was really, really rough. Now, remember the start of the experiment, the cells were pretty, I uh, would say, moderately flaccid, because it could have been, but not as much as it can in the salt solution. No. So now we're also supposed to record what's the observation for the end. And of course, we need to record the time of the experiment, which is going to be 25 minutes. Now, there are some questions that we are going to be looking at. From the experiment, there are three things that could be assessed. Keep in mind that CXC is saying that you can only assess two skills for any experiment. But for this purpose and the virtual lab, teachers might determine, might decide to use other skills. So for this experiment, we could have done measurement and manipulation where we are learning to find the volume of the water, find the length of the potato strip. We could also test for volume and we could test to see if you can use a stopwatch. So all that could have been covered in measurement and manipulation. For those persons who don't have a lab to do this, of course, you could probably measure a length of paper, a strip of paper. You could have the students measure a strip of paper. Uh, ORR, the table would have captured ORR. Everything that you saw and recorded would have come in your ORR observation reporting and recording. And then these questions would fit nicely in AI. So the first question, which of the solution was hypertonic? And you're supposed to give a reason for that. You're also supposed to tell which of the solution was hypotonic and give a reason for that. How does the knowledge of osmosis help a farmer with slug control? Explain, you know, that slug molochs. Explain that from the molochs is a pest to the farmer. And you want to know how this knowledge of uh, osmosis could help the farmer to control slug. Then you want to look at how does the knowledge of osmosis help a person who sells vegetable all right so we want to see if we can start to apply that knowledge then the last thing how does the knowledge of osmosis help the agriculture student with fertilizer application now please look out for the other videos remember to like share and of course subscribe it's csec biological cover page and we have a video out every week